Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma alimna ma infa'una wa infa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma wa wafiqna lil amali bih Tafadhal ya Abdul Rahman Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma fillina wa li shaykhina wa lil mustami'in wa li jami'il muslimin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim qala Allahu ta'ala Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Tasin تلك آيات القرآن وكتاب مبين طاسين These are the verses of the Quran and a clear book. هدى وبشرى للمؤمنين As guidance and good tidings for the believers. Carry on. الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم بالآخرة هم يوقنون who establish prayer and give zakah, and of the hereafter they are certain in faith. Yeah. Indeed, for those who do not believe in the hereafter, we have made pleasing to them their deeds, so they wander blindly. And this is part of the misguidance, which is Allah's justice and wisdom, that Allah Azawajal made it seem to them like their deeds are the right thing to do. Those are the ones for whom there will be the worst uh, of punishment and in the hereafter they are the greatest losers. وَإِنَّكَ لَتُلَقَّ الْقُرْآنَ مِنْ لَدٌ حَكِيمٍ عَلِيمٍ And indeed, O Muhammad, you receive the Qur'an from one wise and knowing. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is Al-Hakim Al-Alim. إِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِأَهْلِهِ إِنِّي آنَسْتُ نَارًا سَآتِيكُمْ مِنْهَا بِخَبَرٍ أَوْ آتِيكُمْ بِشِهَابٍ أو آتيكم بشهاب قبس لعلكم تصطلون. Mention when Musa said to his family, Indeed, I have perceived a fire. I will bring you from their information, or will you bring a burning torch that you may warm yourselves? We spoke about this that Musa, on his return from Madian to Egypt with his family, they became lost in the dark. So when he saw the fire, he said, either I will go to the fire and bring you information in any direction. Someone will tell us which way to go. Or I will bring you a burning torch so that you may warm yourselves. But when he came to it, he was called. Blessed is whoever is at the fire and whoever is around it, and exalted is Allah, Lord of the worlds. Naam. Uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he was called, and here the, the proof is nudia, and he meaning that Allah is that Allah is when he speaks the, the, his kalam, it, it has a nida and a sawt, yusma. You know, it's a it's a it's a sound that can be heard, and it has a a call. You know, Allah Azza wa called him. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told him that this place is a blessed place, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it a place where Allah Azza wa Jal speak to Musa, and Allah Azza wa Jal will declare him to be a prophet. Yeah. So the blessed is the one at the fire is, Nam Musa. The one around the fire, in the land around the fire, in Wadi Al-Muqaddasi, Tuwa. You are in a blessed valley of Tuwa. And that Allah Azza wa Jal, any subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted above everything and free of imperfection. يا موسى إنه أنا الله العزيز الحكيم 
O Musa, indeed it is I, Allah, the exalted in might, the wise. وَأَلْقِ عَصَاكِ فَلَمَّا رَآهَا تَهْتَزُّ كَأَنَّهَا جَانُّ وَلَّا مُدَبِرًا وَلَمْ يُعَقِّبْ يَا مُوسَى لَا تَخَفْ إِنِّي لَا يَخَافُ لَدَيَّ الْمُرْسَلُونَ And he was told, throw down your staff. But when he saw it writhing, 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 as if it were a snake, he turned in flight and did not return. Allah said, O Musa, fear not. Indeed, in my presence, the messengers do not fear. Naam. Ka'annaha jan. Jan here means a snake. The word jan here means a snake. <clears throat> and he ran away. That shows the normal fear of a person, yani, that, that a person has, and that fear doesn't take away from a tawheed. إِلَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ ثُمَّ بَدَّلَ حُسْنًا بَعْدَ سُوءٍ فَإِنِّي غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Otherwise, he who wrongs then substitutes good after evil. Indeed, I am forgiving and merciful. The word إِلَّا here doesn't, it's not متصل. Uh, it's not connected to the previous sentence. إِلَّا here means لَكِن. So we said إِلَّا comes with three Possible meanings. It comes with the meaning of accept, and it comes with the meaning of however, and the meaning of accept is broken into two an exception where the thing which is mentioned is part of the group, and an exception where it isn't part of the group. And so it comes in three ways. One way means accept, and the exception is part of the group. And you, they're, they are part of the same thing. And you, an angel and an angel, a person and a person, a disobedient person and a disobedient person. And it comes with the meaning of except where it's not part of the group. Like the angels made sajda except for Iblis. And he's not an angel. And it comes with the meaning of يعني, المنقطر that which is broken, and it's that, that which is munqati', it comes with the meaning of lakin, however, and it has no connection to the previous ayah at all. Like meaning that the illa here is not connected to the previous ayah. In the illa man valam, it's not connected to the prophets. The prophets don't, are not those who يعني, do evil ways. Illa means, here means however, as for those that oppress themselves. Um, and then they make tawbah. So this doesn't refer to the prophets now. وَأَدْخِلْ يَدَكَ فِي جَيْبِكَ تَخْرُجَ بَيْضَاءَ مِنْ غَيْرِ سُوءٍ فِي تِسْعِ آيَاتٍ إِلَى فِرْعَوْنَ وَقَوْمِهِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ And put your hand into the opening of your garment. At the breast, it will come out white without disease. These are among the nine signs you will take to Fir'aun and his people. Indeed, they have been a people defiantly disobedient. Now, the jayb is not a pocket. Any for those who know, any for those who know Arabic, the jayb is where the clothing opens at the chest. Jayb now it means pocket, right? We use the word jayb for for your pocket, but a jayb here in the Quran it means where the garment opens at the chest. And that's why when the hijab comes about covering the yani, juyub, and that's what it means, yani, the place where the garment opens at the chest is called the, is called the jayb. And so put your hand into where your garment opens at your chest. And it will come out white without disease. The, the nine signs, as we said, are the two signs mentioned here, along with the seven plagues or the seven trials that were sent upon uh, the people of Fir'aun, like the frogs and the blood and the lice and so on, the famine and all that. فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَاتُنَا مُبَصِرَةً قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ But when they came to them, our visible signs, they said, this is obvious magic. And when the signs came, clear to see. 
in a mubsira tent. I'm not sure if it's visible here. Uh, in fact, it, 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 it can't be visible here. Um, why? Because the grammar doesn't work for that. And here, mubsira tent, we can go back to the grammar of the Quran. Like, and it has to be something like a hal here, grammatically. And it has to be something like while they were in a state of being clearly seen. So I don't think visible is the right here. I think the, the correct one is clear to see in Muhsin Khan. And when our signs came, clear to see. Because otherwise it would be ayatuna mubasiratun. That's what it seems to me. Wallahu alam. Go back to the grammar of the Quran in case I made a mistake in it. But that's what I, I, I don't think that translation, it can't be a sifa here. In فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَاتُنَا It can't here be a description of the ayat. In it visible. Otherwise that has to be مُبُسِّرَةٌ yeah. It has to be here like a مُبُسِّرَةٌ وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًّا فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُفْسِدِينَ and they rejected them while their inner selves were convinced thereof out of injustice and haughtiness. So see how was the end of the corruptors. That's powerful. Their inner selves, yani, while their inner selves were sure of them. Yani, inside themselves, they were certain of them. But out of arrogance, they rejected them. And that's the case of many people who reject Yani the ayat of Allah, the message of Islam. In reality, the person is convinced. Internally, they're convinced. And that's why a lot of the time you have to distinguish between someone who is arguing with you out of a genuinely not accepting what you say. Like genuinely, I don't understand what you mean. I don't really see it. And somebody who is being stubborn. And actually inside, it's there. But on the outside, the person is, no, I don't believe it. No, you haven't convinced me. Like, and you've done any, there's a situation of someone who's genuine like that, really genuine. They, they, they really genuinely feel that they haven't had the message. Like in these people, they knew the ayat, but they behaved out of injustice and arrogance. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُدَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَضَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّنْ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we had certainly given to Dawood and Sulaiman knowledge. And they said, praise is due to Allah who has favoured us over many of his believing servants. Now and this is from the shukr of... Uh... Dawood and Sulaiman. I'mal wa ala Dawood ashukra. From the shukr of, of Dawood and Sulaiman, and the gratitude is gratitude with the tongue. They praised Allah for the blessings they had. وورث سليمان داود وقال يا أيها الناس علمنا منطق الطير وأوتينا من كل شيء إن هذا لهو الفضل المبين And Sulaiman inherited Dawood He said, O oh people, we have been taught the language of birds and we have been given from all things. Indeed, this is an evident bounty. Yeah. Yeah, they were taught the language of birds. And that is, yani, as Allah just said, it's not, to be, it's not to be interpreted away or changed in the meaning. Yani, as Allah just said, that's how it's to be taken. As for the kafir of it, how is the language of the bird we, we, don't, we don't know how that is. That is Allah Azza wa Jal only knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like in Allah Azza wa Jal taught to Sulaiman. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave Sulaiman an army made of yani his army of people, his army of the jinn, and his army of the birds. And all of them were put at his disposal. وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ And gathered for Sulaiman were his soldiers of the jinn and men and birds and they were marching in rows. 
حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة يا أيها النمل دخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون until when they came upon the valley of the ants and ants said O oh ants Enter your dwellings that you not be crushed by Sulaiman and his soldiers while they perceive not. Uh, Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that the ant made the other ants here. And he said, either this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this particular ant a voice that was khariqa lil ada, and it was a, like a supernatural in occurrence. I say that word, I don't, I don't know a better word than that. It is something which was not normal. And it was, a, it, was, it was something that Allah gave that particular ant at that moment. And as part of any of the miracles that were given to Sulaiman and so on, that that ant at that particular moment spoke any, with a voice that filled the, uh, in the, filled the valley, or that the ant in some way communicated this with the ants nearby and they communicated it with the other ants. Yani, it spread like, so the, yani, is it the case that the ant spoke out loud and the valley heard the sound of the ant? Or is it the case that the ant, in the ants communicated among each other and the message spread among them? فتبسم ضاحكا من قولها وقال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلني برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين So Suleyman smiled amused at her speech and said, My Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor, which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents, and, do, and to do righteousness of which you approve, and admit me by your mercy into the ranks of your righteous servants. And Sulaiman smiled in amusement. Sa'di ta'ala brings the benefit here. He says, either he was, and he was amazed by the ant's eloquence. And it's an ant, right? You don't expect the ant to speak. And the ant speaks with such Eloquence yani, and fasaha. So he said this amazed him. Yani, this miracle that he was given, that he was able to understand what this ant said. And he said, This is the situation of the prophets. They are amazed by things that are rightful to amaze people. And as for the people who are any the, the foolish people, any they laugh at inappropriate things, right? People laugh and find amusing things. You know, they watch a silly video on YouTube and they, they watch it over and over again and laugh at it. And they, the thing of, if you see the prophets, they had complete wisdom and yani, maturity. And he doesn't, he smiled at something that is deserving of it. Yani. But I think that's a faida, wallahi, he brings. Yani, I think it's, it's worth noting, wallahi, that the prophets look at the ka kamalul adab, the excellent manners. And knowing the ant knew that Sulaiman is not they are not intending, you know, a prophet doesn't come intending to destroy everything in front of them. Like by accident, they would trample over you. But it's, it contains the adab of the anbiya, the etiquettes of the prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam. And then he makes dua to Allah, and he enable me or inspire me, and he, to be grateful for your favor which you bestowed upon me and my parents, and to do righteousness, of which you approve, and enter me by your mercy, and because you don't enter except by Allah's mercy into the ranks of the righteous servants. And you don't become a righteous servant except by the mercy of Allah. And this dua is suitable for anyone to make. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayhi wa ala walidayhi wa an'amala salihan tarda wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. Here, just be a little careful. You've got a, a dal and a ta. So you must make sure the makhraj of the dal doesn't slip towards a dot. The dal and then let it come to the ta after that.
وتفقد الطير فقال ما لي لا أرى الهدى هدى أم كان من الغائبين and he took attendance of the birds and said why do I not see the hood I have no idea how I just say hood hood <laughs> hood hood or is yeah. he among the absent it has a name who 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 boy who I have I, everyone knows that this you know what can I say any I didn't take my my degree is not in English, <laughs> but it's a hood hood. Yani, it's a it's a type of bird. The help, I don't know. I have no idea how you, how you pronounce that. Yani. Someone can look it up and tell us how to pronounce it on the Yunus. You can look it up on your phone and tell us how to pronounce it. And but it's the hood hood. It's a it's a sm- it's a small bird. Or could he be absent? Because remember, Hushira, these army were brought together. They were in a strict command structure. They were not allowed to just fly off somewhere. So he's now angry that he doesn't see this particular bird in its place that it's been assigned. I will surely punish him with a severe punishment or slaughter him unless he brings me clear authorization. Any a valid excuse. فَمَكَثَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ فَقَالَ أَحَطُّ بِمَا لَمْ تُحِطْ بِهِ وَجِئْتُكَ مِنْ سَبَئٍ بِنَبَئٍ يَقِينٍ But he stayed not long and said, I have encompassed in knowledge that which you have not encompassed and I have come to you from Sheba with certain news. نعم. Or Sib. يعني from Seba, يعني from Sheba, نعم. And Seba is mentioned يعني, uh, more than once. It's in Yemen. على كل حال. نعم. Uh, Seba uh, is in is in is a is an area in Yemen. إني وجدت امرأة. عفوا. This is not وجه is to face something. إني وجدت I found. Without. إني وجدت. إني وجدت. إني وجدت إني وجدت امرأة تملكهم وأوتيت وأوتيت إني وجدت امرأة تم وإن إني وجدت امرأة تملكهم وأوتيت من كل شيء ولها عرش عظيم. Indeed, I found that woman ruling them, and she has been given of all things, and she has a great throne. And he, all the things that a ruler could ever want. When it says all things here, there's an understanding to it. And he, all things doesn't mean everything and he, in the heavens and the earth. And he, she's been given everything like we would say in English. And he, you've got everything. And he, everything a person like you would want. وجدتها وقومها يسجدون للشمس من دون الله وزين لهم الشيطان أعمالهم فصدهم عن السبيل فصدهم عن السبيل فهم لا يهتدون. I found her and a people prostrating to the sun instead of Allah. And shaitan has made their deeds pleasing to them and inverted them from his way so they are not guided. And that shows that from the things that people worshipped, yani besides Allah was the sun. So they were sun uh, worshippers. And shaitan made it seem yani made it seem seem like it was a good idea, like it was pleasing to them, taking them away from the right way. ألا يسجدوا لله الذي يخرج الخبأ في السماوات والأرض ويعلم ما تخفون وما تعلنون. And so they do not prostrate to Allah who brings forth what is hidden within the heavens and the earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare. نعم الخبأ is الخفي that which is hidden. يعني wherever it is hidden in the heavens and in the earth. الله لا إله إلا هو رب العرش العظيم. 
Allah, there is no deity except Him, Lord of the Great Throne. And that shows this is a message that was consistent among all of the Prophets. And it doesn't matter whether people worship the sun or the graves or the righteous or they worship prophets or they worship angels. The answer to all of those things is La ilaha illallah. And so it's important to note because some people will bring a narrative that it's only when you worship an idol that you go against La ilaha illallah. Like the reality is that the Quran speaks about different people. Allah speaks in the Quran about different people. Each of them worship different things. There were people who took the prophets and, and they took the angels as objects of worship. The people who took the righteous for worship. There were people who worshipped the sun. People who worshipped the moon. There were people who worshipped the stars. Salam Afwan Habib, that's the second time, Wallahi. Akhir Kareem. You have to switch it off, Wallahi. Second time I told you, Wallahi. Uh, off completely, please. Otherwise, I have to ask you to go upstairs now. Because it comes, it interrupts our class. قال سننظر أصدقة أم كنت من الكاذبين. سليمان said we will see. أفضل. الله we we didn't bring the ayat of sajda. الله لا إله إلا هو رب العرش العظيم. I read it. Are you read it? أفضل. Yeah. Forgive me. I was. I'll do it again. الله لا إله إلا هو رب العرش العظيم. Now that that's I you did read it. Yeah. I was explaining La ilaha illallah and then I, I didn't mention it. The ayah is ayah, the ayah is sajda tilawa. For this is which number now? Eight. Eight or nine? I've oh. got the list. I, I keep the list because I, I know I'm going to get myself mixed up now. La, it's number nine. I said eight already went. For eight already went. Eight. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اسْجُدُوا لِلرَّحْمَنِ قَالُوا وَمَا الرَّحْمَنِ Number nine, this one is uh, the ninth sajda tilawa. Out of 15 in the Quran. قال سننظر أصدقة أم كنت من الكاذبين. Suleiman said, We will see whether you were truthful or of the liars. اذهب بكتابي هذا فألقه إليهم ثم تول عنهم فانظر ماذا يرجعون. Take this letter of mine and deliver it to them. Then leave them and see what answer they will return. قالت يا أيها الملأ إني ألقي إلي كتاب كريم. She said, "O eminent ones, indeed to me has been delivered a noble letter." The eminent ones are the the mala, any the chief that the her senior advisers, her court, because she's the queen, right? So she has a court. In other words, any noble men, uh, people of high position in the society. And she says there has been delivered to me a noble letter. That's also the proof of using the word Karim to mean makroom. Any Karim meaning it is it, it, it has been given nobility. As opposed to, it's just an evidence, yani, we said regarding, any, for example, uh, whether it's linguistically correct to say Ramadan Karim or the Sunnah is to say Ramadan Mubarak, but linguistically, this is also from the proof that there's nothing wrong with it, with it linguistically. Innahu min Sulaiman wa innahu bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Indeed, it is from Sulaiman, and indeed, it is in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. And that shows that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and it was something that was present among the Anbiya before and that Sulaiman began his letter with it and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began his letters that he dictated to be written to the kings and he, how did the Prophet Sallallahu begin his letters to the kings Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim from any Muhammad the messenger of Allah to so and so Assalamu ala man ittaba' al huda Salam upon the one who follows the guidance for Sulaiman was like that he started his letter, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
And that is a proof that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim came in the Quran. Yani for those ulama, yani those mashayikh who said that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not an ayah itself. Yani it's, a, it's a break between the surahs. And, and those who said it's not an ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, everyone, everyone agreed that here it's a part of the Quran. And yani that it's a, it's a part of an ayah of the Quran here. As for Surah Al-Fatiha, they differ. Is it an ayah or is it an introduction? It, from Allah, no doubt. But is it an ayah or is it an introduction to the surah? Like, is it like a, an introduction to the surah or is it an ayah? Uh, but here they didn't, they didn't disagree that it's an ayah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah ta'lu alayya wa atuni muslimin. Be not haughty with me, but come to me in submission as Muslims. And you don't, don't be arrogant with me, but come to me in submission. Here, muslimin here. Uh, I want to see what a Sa'di says because all of these three take the word Muslimin here as Islam, and as in submission to Allah. So let me have a look here at uh, now. Miss Sa'di doesn't doesn't mention it. We'll we'll have a look at it, inshallah. Like in all three of them, they said Wa Tuni Muslimin accept Islam. And Sulaiman is calling them to accept Islam. Otherwise, the, otherwise the word Muslim is to be in submission. Now, for here, to accept Islam. And he, all of them, and he's calling them, don't be arrogant and accept Islam. قالت يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في أمري ما كنت قاطعة أمرا حتى تشهدون She said, O oh, eminent ones, advise me in my affair. I will not decide a matter until you witness for me. Um, until you are present with me or you or you testify in my favor, either of those two. They said, we are men of strength and of great military might, but the command is yours, so see what you will command. Yeah. And they left the matter to her. But they said, we're ready to fight. If you want, we are, we are people of great military strength. We are prepared to fight. But the matter is in your hands. So look and see what you think is best. قالت إن الملوك إذا دخلوا قرية أفسدوها وجعلوا أعزة أهلها أذلة وكذلك يفعلون She said, indeed kings, when they enter a city, they ruin it and render the honored of its people humbled. And thus do they do. So here what you can say is that that is no doubt that is the nature of the kings in general. And here Suleiman is unique because he has prophethood. Like in the general situation of the kings is like that from what they knew you know, of history. That when they enter they're going to ruin our city. They're going to bring us out as in slavery. They're going to you know, destroy what we have. And that's the, that is what people normally expect from the muluk. However, in illa man rahim Allah, except the one that Allah had mercy upon. Wa inni mursilatun ilayhim bihadiyatin fanadiratun bima yarji'ul mursaloon. But indeed, I will send to them a gift and see with what reply the messengers will return. Now, uh, Sa'di also, yes, I found, I found what I was looking for. What Tuni Muslimin, I found it. That there is a view like that. That the Muslimin here, Wallahu Alam, it doesn't have to necessarily mean <coughs> Islam in the sense of submitting to Allah. Rather, what it can mean is come to me in submission to my authority. That also is a meaning here. Sa'di mentions it. And he tahta sultani. Come to me in my, uh, my authority. And that no doubt includes submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no ishkal in it. Uh, Afwan, we got to the hadiyah. Yani the, let me present them with, with tribute. Yani the gift here is like a tribute. Let me present them with something too. If we give them any yani gifts, perhaps they will decide to say that, look, as long as you give us something, we won't invade your lands. That's the nature of the worldly kings. She's still thinking about Sulaiman as a, 
king of the worldly kings. Yani, he's going to ruin my city, he's going to come and enslave us, but maybe if we pay him enough tribute, he will leave us alone. فلما جاء سليمان قال أتمدونني بمال فما آتاني الله خير فما آتاني الله خير مما آتاكم بل أنتم بهديتكم تفرحون So when they came to Sulaiman he said do you provide me with wealth but what Allah has given me is better than what He has given you. Rather, it is you who rejoice in your gift. Now, so Suleiman was not connected to this world. His heart was not in this world. He said, I have no need of wealth. And what, I, what Allah has given me is better than what He's given you. Rather, you people find this gift to be something that is... And you like the idea of giving gifts to people. You people are the ones who think that you can any, save yourselves by paying something in this world. Or you people enjoy receiving gifts and enjoy people giving you money. For me, I don't, I don't enjoy it. What Allah has given me is enough. ارجع إليهم فلنأتينهم بجنود لا قبل لهم بها ولنخرجنهم ولنخرجنهم منها أذلة وهم صاغرون Return to them for, for we will surely come to them with soldiers that they will be powerless to encounter and we will surely, be ex, we will surely expel them therefrom in humiliation and they will be debased. Yani if they don't come to me, go back. He sent the chief envoy, the diplomat, said, take your gift, go back and tell them if they don't come, I will bring them an army. They will never be able to defeat it. Because his army is an army of humans, an army of jinn, an army of birds. And it's a vast army. They will never be able to defeat it. Um, and they will be that disgrace that they feared will happen to them unless they come to me and agree to my authority. And Suleiman from this, he knew that they would come. Either from prophethood, from what Allah revealed to him, or because he knew the, the proposition, and there's no way they can refuse it. So he knew that they would come to him and he submissively. قال يا أيها الملأ أيكم يأتيني بعرشها قبل أن يأتوني مسلمين Suleiman said, O assembly of jinn, which of you will bring me her throne before they come to me in submission? See here the ajeeb thing is, all of the previous translations said that the word muslimin in the letter means Muslims to Allah, Muslims any for Allah. And yet here, يعني here, all of them translate the word Muslimin, all of them translate the word Muslimin as submitting to his rule. But that's from the strange any contradictions you get in the translation. Yani, the same word is used a few ayahs before and a few ayahs after. All three take it one way in one ayah and all three take it the complete other tafsir in the other ayah. But it would seem to me, yani, Muslimin, that's what I said, like the view of a Saudi. It encompasses submitting to Allah. Like in the, so what Sulaiman is saying, come to me under my authority. Come to me in Muslimin, yani in a submission yani to my authority, accepting me as your ruler. And that no doubt implies Islam. There's no doubt about that. But that's, it's strange that all of them, the translation, all three, translated Muslimin in the same context, the same sentence, the first time as being Muslims to Allah. And the second time, all three of them took it as being submission to Sulaiman. It's just a, a point worth noting. Any, So Sulaiman knew that they would come to him. So he said, which can bring me her throne? Any from the chiefs, either from the jinn, from the men, from all the people who are gathered here together. Who can bring me the throne of? It said her name was Bilqis. That's the mashhur. Yani. That her name was Bilqis. Like I, I tell you that it didn't come from the... Islamic text, I think it came from what is said that she, her name was Bilqis. 
قال قال عفريت من الجن أنا آتيك به قبل أن تقوم من مقامك وإني عليه لقوي أمين. A powerful one from among the jinn said, I will bring it to you before you rise from your place. And indeed, I am for this task strong and trustworthy. Okay, so the first thing is, who is the Ifrit? The Ifrit is the strong and you can say energetic, if that's the right word, jinn. It's a type of jinn. This jinn said, before you rise from your place. Any meaning? Before you rise from your place, meaning before the majlis is over. Wallahu alam. That seems to be the meaning. And there's some d- discussion about it, but before the majlis finishes, before you're sitting, and I know how long you normally sit in this gathering before you leave, before you finish your majlis and stand up, I'll bring the throne to you. So what's the ifrit going to do? It's going to f- fly there and pick the throne and carry it back. Because he's qawi. And he says, I'm trustworthy. I will, I will do it for you. Naam. So the ifrit offers to do that. <clears throat> قال الذي عنده علم من الكتاب أنا آتيك به قبل أن يرتد إليك طرفك فلما رآه مستقرا عنده قال هذا من فضل ربي قال هذا من فضل ربي ليبلوني أشكر أم أكفر ومن شكر فإنما يشكر Said one who had knowledge from the scripture I will bring it to you before your glance returns to you And when Suleiman saw it placed before him He said This is from the favour of my Lord To test me whether I will be grateful or ungrateful And whoever is grateful his Gratitude is only for the benefit of himself and whoever is ungrateful then indeed my Lord is free of need and generous. So now the, the, the understanding of the ayah becomes a bit more complicated because the ifrit we, we had an idea that the ifrit what it's going to do is from its strength and power it's going to go there collect the throne and carry it back from the jinn. Uh, and that shows that that is an ability that some of the jinn have any some of the jinn have the ability to fly through the air some have the ability to move quickly some have a certain strength. Like now, a man with knowledge of the scripture. There's a lot of discussion over who this man was. The most famous view is it was a man who was called Asif ibn Barkhia. And he was an assistant to Sulaiman who was knowledgeable about the scripture. There's another view that it was Sulaiman himself. And there's a view that the man who had knowledge of the scripture was Suleiman himself. Like in the mashhur, the, the famous view is that it was this man Asif ibn Barkhia, something like that his name is. Type, what knowledge did he have? The knowledge he had is Ismullah al Allah's greatest name. Type, what is Allah's greatest name? The ulama had so much ikhtilaf about it. But the strongest views come back to three. First of all, do we know Allah's greatest name? I mean, has it been told to us in Islam? Yes, undoubtedly. In numerous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَقَدْ دَعَوْتَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الْأَعْظَمِ You have made dua with Allah's greatest name. So the name is known to the Muslims. It's not a name that was only known to Ahl Kitab. It's a name that was known to the Muslims. الَّذِي إِذَا سُئِلَ بِهِ أَعْطَى وَإِذَا دُعِيَ بِهِ أَجَابِ If you ask Allah with this name, He will give you. And if you make dua to Him, your dua will be accepted. تمام? Okay. The three strongest views about this name, if you gather all the narrations about it, there are three strong views. I don't believe there's another strong view. There's only three views that have really strong evidence for them. The first is that the name is Allah. And the evidence for that comes back to two, re- more than two, I'm summarizing two key things. The first is that the name Allah, all of the other names are underneath it. And the name Allah is the name that 
all the other names go back to. For that is one view. And the second reason they said is because if you look at the ahadith, the only name that comes in all of them is the name Allah. Wallahu a'lam. The second view is that the name is al Hay al Qayyum. This is the view that Ibn al Qayyim strengthened it. And the, the evidence for this is that when the Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned it, he mentioned it in such a way that strongly indicates al Hay al Qayyum. Because he said the name of Allah, the greatest name of Allah is in three surahs of the Quran. Which three surahs? Yalla Abdurrahman, Hat. Don't make a mistake. Which three surahs? Hashar. Al Hay al Qayyum. Oh, Think about it. In three surahs. Baqarah. No doubt. Allahu la ilaha illa hu al Hay al Qayyum. Which other surah? Ali Imran. Ali Imran. Allahu la ilaha illa hu al Hay al Qayyum. Which other surah has al Hay al Qayyum in it? Taha. Taha. What's the ayah? Allah la ilaha illa. Wa'anati al wujuh. Oh. Wa'anati al wujuh lil hayy al qayyum. The faces are humbled before al hayy al qayyum. So when the Prophet said it's in three surahs, the name Allah is in every surah, right? Or almost every surah. There might be inna atayna al kawthar, it's an odd surah. Like in generally speaking, one or two surahs doesn't have it in. Um, some of the small surahs in Juz'an Mali, Ilafi Quraysh. But generally speaking, the name Allah is in almost every surah. So why single out those three if the name is not al Hayy al-Qayyum? Like in the people came back and said, but it's not in every narration. In every narration that mentions Allah's greatest name doesn't mention, not all of them mention, because the names were mentioned. Yani a person said, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anna ka anta Allahu la ilaha illa anta. Well, I ask you by the fact that you are Allah, there's no God worthy of worship except you, Al-Wahid, Al-Ahad, Al-Samad, Al-Ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuan ahad, Al-Mannan, until the end of the hadith. But Al-Hay Al-Qayyum is not mentioned in it. And the Prophet said he just made dua with Allah's greatest name. This brings us to what I personally believe is the strongest view. Wallahi, I, this mas'ala was going around for a long time. Like in Wallahi, what I believe are the, the lack of knowledge and little bit of knowledge and tiny bit of research, like in what I honestly believe is the correct view is the third view. That the word ism here doesn't mean one name. It means the same as Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It is a collection of names. And that means it is every name of Allah where the meaning is not restricted to one particular concept. Like Ar Rabb, Allah, Al Hay, Al Qayyum. Why I believe that to be the strongest view is first of all, that if you want to make Jemma of the Adilla, bring all the Adilla together, it's very hard. Because the reality is that some of them you would be certain that the hadith says Al Hay Al Qayyum, the other one is not there. For it doesn't. Yani you cannot say that it's not al Hay al-Qayyum because it's very clear in some of the hadith that it is. Yet in other hadith, al Hay al-Qayyum is not mentioned. Also, grammatically, it's valid. Ismullah al-A'zam, you can say it for a group of names that share the same quality. Like Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. But grammatically, it's, it's valid. There's no issue. Grammatically, in Arabic language, there's no issue with it. And it's a view among some of the scholars. <clears throat> However, what do I say is safer? If you want to make dua with Allah's greatest name, what is safer? The safer is to use all of them. Call upon Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Hay, Ya Qayyum, Ya Rabb, any samad any all of these names that have comprehensive, unrestricted meanings. Because some of the names of Allah are limited, right? Some of the names of Allah, the meanings are limited to a particular concept. Let's say, for example, Ar-Rahim is connected to mercy. It's a beautiful, perfect name which has infinite, infinite mercy in it. But it's limited to the concept of mercy. And it's, it, the name revolves around the concept of mercy. Like in Ar-Rabb, vast, yani, there are hundreds and hundreds of meanings inside of the name. The name Allah even more than that. For it seems to me, Wallahu alam, Allah is our knows best. That uh, the third view might be the stronger view. That it's not a single name, 
but that it is a group of names that share a single characteristic, which is that their meanings are unrestricted and unlimited. Like in if you if I was if you were to force me, wallahi, I, I incline towards al hayyul qayyum. I, I have to say, because even though the name Allah is mentioned in all of those narrations, the way the Prophet singled it out like that, this name is in Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al Imran and Surah Taha. The only two names that are unique to those three surahs is Al Hayyul Qayyum. I can, at the same time, it doesn't come in all the narrations. But I feel like the third one, perhaps it has a strength to it, yani, that it's not one name but a group of names. Ala kulli hal. If you say Allah al Hayyul Qayyum, I believe that you have called upon Allah by Ismihi al Azam. If you were to use those three names, Allah, Al Hay, and Al Qayyum, I think you've called upon Allah with Ismullah al Azam. Allah's greatest name. For he had knowledge of Allah's greatest name. So what did he do? He made dua. Or it was Sulaiman who had knowledge of Allah's greatest name, and Sulaiman made dua. And in the more, more apparent is that it wasn't Sulaiman, it was a man who was known as Asif ibn, uh, ibn Barkhia. And he made dua with Allah's greatest name. And the throne came in front of Sulaiman before, any his, uh, any before your glance returns to you, any in, in the blink of an eye. As Sa'di mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, that Sulaiman in that time was in Sham. He didn't go to Yemen. That's Fa'idah, and he mentions he didn't go to Yemen. For the Ifrit was willing to go in that, that's fast. Yani. In that time, he was willing to go from Syria to Yemen and back in the time of the Majlis of Sulaiman. Like in what defeated the Ifrit? What was stronger than the Ifrit? Dua. For I believe this has a profound impact on a person who is worried or affected by the jinn and the shayateen. And they say, you know, this jinn, this shaitan, how will we be able to get over it? It's an ifrit inside of this person. And he can take them to Yemen in, you know, an hour or two and come back. How will a person survive an ifrit from the jinn? I say to you that, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, you have something way more powerful than ifrit. And infinitely more powerful than Ifrit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal sincerely, you can bring the Ni'farit, all the Ifrit in the world. And wallahi, they will not be able to do anything. Nor will Iblis, nor will his all of his army. For the thing that defeated the Ifrit who went to offer to, to do this for Sulaiman was dua. With Allah's greatest name. But it's a powerful. Yani it's a powerful message. He saw it placed before him. Yani he saw it placed before him. That's what is apparent. Do we have a guarantee that it was Allah's greatest name? Here it's a, it's a view of the scholars of tafsir. Like can you... It, I'm not sure that any. Yani, it's a. It's even a Saudi seems like he he's not sure. He says at the end, Allahu alam. He had some knowledge. He had some knowledge of the scripture, which seems like it was Allah's greatest name. The reason why is because there are other narrations which mention Ahlul Kitab making du'a with Allah's greatest name and getting it straight away. Yani, there there are narrations like that from that are that are elsewhere, you know, of people making uh, du'a. When did we mention it? We mentioned it in uh, the one from Bani Israel who was given the ayat of Allah minha, and he betrayed it and he left it behind. And we said he was given Ismullah al azam But that seems to be what he was given. Wallahu, wallahu alam. There's another view that it wasn't that man at all. It was Sulaiman who said it. And Sulaiman said it to the Ifrit or to the Mala. That I can bring the throne before you. Any by dua or by the miracle of prophethood, the miracles of prophethood. kulli hal, any I believe you can take that message, any that whatever any you fear the shaitan or you fear the jinn, 
لكن الدعاء دعاء is more powerful than the jinn قال نكروا لها عرشها ننظر أتهتدي أم تكون من الذين لا يهتدون He said disguise for her, her throne We will see whether she will be guided to truth or will be of those, of those who is not guided فلما جاءت قيل أهكذا عرشك قالت كأنه هو وأوتينا العلم من قبلها وكنا مسلمين So when she arrived it was said to her is your throne like this She said it is as though it was Sulaiman said and we were given knowledge before her and we have been Muslims in submission to Allah Naam so here this there are this is where it gets again a little bit complicated as who said what Any who said what? So, one of the views is that this is the statement of the queen of Sabah, Bilqis. And that what she's saying is, as soon as he refused my gift, I knew he was a prophet. That's one view. That we were given knowledge before this. Yani we've submitted in, is- in Islam. Because of Suleiman refusing the gift, we realize that he's, he's a person who doesn't live for this world. That's one, yani, that's one uh, view. And the fact that uh, we saw his ability to bring this arsh, this throne from such a far place. And that's one uh, possibility. Yani the other, uh, and there isn't, he mentions another possibility, Yani, for it. He said, um, this was from her intelligence that she said, it's as though it's, it is as though it's mine, because there had been some changes to it. And she didn't say, it is mine. Uh, she knew it, but she used a word that was vague. He says, and he saw that she could be, she, she doesn't say something wrong. You know, like when someone says, do you know, have we met before? Have you ever had that situation happen to you? Where someone says, have we met before? You say, I feel like we might have met before. And she was very, she was very clever like that. And she didn't say it's my throne and she didn't say it's not. She knows she says it's mine and he says it's not yours. Or she says, it's not mine. And then he says it is yours. So she said, it seems like mine. And he says, this, is, this shows her intelligence. Then the second view is that Suleiman is the one who said it. Yani being amazed by her intelligence and thanking Allah that we were given knowledge before this. Naam. And this is Yani with regard to the hidayah uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, that's what it seems to be that they say. That this is the, the two views. Yani. Was it Sulaiman who said, we were given knowledge before this? Yani, that we were given knowledge before her. And that's the view that is taken where? It's taken in Sahih International. That Sulaiman said, we were given knowledge before her and we are Muslims in submission to Allah. And the clear Quran takes the opposite view. We've already received knowledge of Sulaiman's prophethood because he refused the gift. And Muhsin Khan also takes the view that it's Sulaiman who said it. Knowledge was bestowed on us before her and we submitted to Allah. And he meaning that he's amazed by her intelligence. But he says Allah has already given me, and Allah has given me guidance before this, which is greater than her guidance. And that how she was so clever to know. And what Allah has given me is better. And like that, the difference between whether it was Sulaiman or whether it was her who said it. And that makes it very hard to translate. Because it's like the statement in, the, in Surah Yusuf. Who said it? Was it Yusuf who said it or was it the wife of Al-Aziz who said it? For depending on who said it, you will, like, you, you will change. 
that so that he knows Nilam Akhunhu Bil Ghaib. I didn't betray him in the unseen. Who didn't betray who? Is it Yusuf wants the husband to know that I didn't betray him? Or the wife wants to know Yusuf that Yusuf to know that she didn't betray him. But it's hard to translate when you have two completely different possibilities. Except to, to put a footnote and say this one or this one. وَصَدَّهَا مَا كَانَتْ تَعْبُدُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهَا كَانَتْ مِن قَوْمٍ كَافِرِينَ And that which was she was worshipping other than Allah had, all, had averted her from submission to Him. Indeed, she was from a disbelieving people. It had averted her from submission to Allah. And that's why... From this ayah, some of them strengthened the fact that it was Sulaiman who said the previous sentence. Because the previous sentence, if we say she said it, it feels like she has already accepted Islam. Yet in the next ayah, Allah tells us that she has been held back because of what she used to worship. And that's the nature of people. Yani they see the signs and they're held, they're held back because of what she used to worship besides. Yani she was held back from Islam despite her intelligence. And her praiseworthy qualities, she was held back because of her aqidah that she had before of worshipping the sun. sorry. <laughs> قَالَ إِنَّهُ صَرْحٌ مُمَرَّدٌ مِّنْ قَوَارِيرٌ قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي وَأَسْلَمْتُ مَعَ سُلَيْمَانَ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ She was told, enter the palace. But when she saw it, she thought it was a body of water and uncovered her shins to wade through. He said, indeed, it is a palace whose floor is made uh, smooth with glass. She said, my Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself and I submit with Sulaiman to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Now, she was told to enter the palace. And again, she's a very, she was known for her intelligence. So when she saw there was a body of water, she knows that Sulaiman at the moment is honoring and he's not... He's not hurting people. He's not imprisoning people. So she enters. She's a queen and she has a position of status. And when she sees the water, she feels like she, that so she doesn't damage her clothes. She lifts up her clothes to, so that she can step into the water. Except that this time she wasn't right. It wasn't a body of water, but it was a palace paved with crystal that Sulaiman, his army, had built for him, yani from the jinn and from and the men that had built for him. So when she saw the vastness of what Sulaiman had and how great it was in comparison to her kingdom, she realized that this is now from yani Sulaiman. This is not normal yani to be to have this. What Sulaiman has, now this is not. I've now, she said, I've accepted Islam. I wronged my soul by worshiping other than Allah. And I've accepted Islam along with Sulaiman in before Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And it's said in he, from the Mashkur is that he married her. That's the famous view again from Kitab that he married her after that. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَى ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا أَنِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ فَإِذَا هُمْ فَرِيقَانِ يَخْتَصِمُونَ and we had certainly sent to Thamud, their brother Salih, saying, worship Allah. And at once there were two parties conflicting. Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala mentions yani, uh, a very good benefit. He said, this is what Allah told us about the story of the Queen of Saba before the, I, the previous ayah. And what happened between her and Sulaiman. Everything other than that is from things that were added on later, yani, and stories of the children of Israel, these are not related to the tafsir of the speech of Allah. They are the matters that we don't say she did or didn't. Yani, the other things the children of Israel said, we neither approve them nor do we not approve them. And we certainly don't prefer them over the evidence that came from Allah in the Quran. 
he said the vast majority of things that are narrated in, about this, or most of them, in, it's not any from the things that we have an evidence for in the Quran. And he said, so in what we we neither any confirm them nor do we deny them, and it seems that it is better not to include them in the tafsir, and Allah knows best. For that's a, and it's a faida, and to be honest, he says that in reality, the kalam of Allah does not need the stories of children, the children of Israel to you know, explain it. Hasha wa kalla. Does Allah's speech need explanation from the stories of the Bible? But he said like that, you know, maybe it's better that we don't mention these in the books of tafsir. Because ultimately it seems like as an adab, it's lack of adab with Allah that we're saying that the Qur'an needs the stories of the Bible to explain it. Allah told us what we need. And it's befitting to stop at what Allah told us. Lakin many of the scholars of tafsir said there's no harm in it. Lakin it's secondary. It shouldn't be made the primary tafsir of the ayah. Lakin a person can mention, like the Prophet said, وَحَدِّثُ عَنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِلُ وَلَا حَرَجْ you can mention alongside, but what Sa'di said is important here because he's telling you that don't allow yourself to get, uh, and you don't allow yourself to get uh, sidetracked by the Israeliyat in Tafsir, and that's why if you look at the summary of Ibn Kathir, what's the first thing that they take out of the, out of Ibn Kathir when they make the summary? All the Israeliyat. And even Kathir mentioned it because the Prophet said you can tell it about it, there's no harm in it. They can take it all out. Because it's not from the it's not from Sulb al Mudu of Tafsir. It's not the core of Tafsir. And the, the heart of Tafsir is not the stories of the Bible. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ قَبَلَ الْحَسَنَةِ لو لا تستغفرون الله لعلكم ترحمون. He said, O oh my people, why are you impatient for evil before good? Why do you not seek forgiveness of Allah that you may receive mercy? Now, the evil before good is what we have mentioned, yeah, and he's bringing about Allah's punishment, bring it about quickly instead of asking for mercy. قالوا طيرنا بك وبمن معك. قال طائركم عند الله بل أنتم قوم تفتنون. They said we consider you a bad omen, you and those with you. He said your omen is with Allah, rather you are people being tested. In your fate is with Allah. In your, the 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 reality is that your omens you believe in, all of it is in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And we don't have a place for omens and superstition in Islam. وَكَانَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ تِسْعَةُ رَهْطِ يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَوْدِ وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ And there were in the city nine family heads causing corruption in the land and not mending its affairs. It's said that they were from the, you know, the, chief, the chiefs or the sons of the chiefs, you know, who were the, the heads of the families who were causing corruption in the earth. قالوا لا تقسموا بالله قالوا تقاسموا بالله لنبيتنه وأهله ثم لنقولن ثم لنقولن ثم ل ثم لنقولن لوليه ما شهدنا مهلك أهله وإن لصادقون. They said. Take a mutual oath by Allah that we will kill him by night, he and his family. Then we will say to his executor, we do not executor, witness... Executor, I think it is now. Huh? Executor. Oh. Then, then we will say to his executor, we did not witness the destruction of his family. And indeed, we are truthful. You need to, to the executor here is the, the close family members who inherit the, from them and have the right to avenge the blood. And he, when they are looking for who shall we take retribution on, we'll just say, we never, we don't have any idea who killed him. Um, I think, Ikhwan, if we close that window, we'll be good to show. No. 
ومكروا مكرا ومكرنا مكرا وهم لا يشعرون and they planned a plan and we planned a plan while they perceive not فانظر كيف كان عاقبة مكرهم أن دمرناهم وقومهم أجمعين Then look how was the outcome of their plan that we destroyed them and their people all فتلك بيوتهم خاوية بما ظلموا إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يعلمون So those are their houses Desolate, desolate? Desolate Desolate because Completely empty and ruined now Because of the wrong they had done Indeed, and that is a sign for people who know Allah preserved their houses and destroyed them وَأَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ and we save those who believed and used to have taqwa of Allah. وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ وَأَنْتُمْ تُبْصِرُونَ And mention Lut when he said to his people, Do you commit immorality while you are seen? And do you commit uh, immorality while you are aware that it's wrong or while you can see one another? So there's two views. Yani one is that yani you are committing immorality yani publicly or where yani you're in a way where the two of you can see each other or whatever it might be. And the other is that yani when you know it's wrong, do you commit immorality and you people can see clearly that this is wrong? أَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمُ تَجَهَلُونَ Do you indeed approach men with desire instead of women? Rather you are people behaving ignorantly. Yeah. And that's their crime, right? So no one has the right to say their crime is that they didn't get married or something like that. This is their, their crime. فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِّنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ But the answer of his people was not accepted. They said, expel the family of Lut from your city. Indeed, there are people who keep themselves pure. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ إِلَّا مْرَأَتَهُ قَدَّرْنَاهَا مِنَ الْغَابِرِينَ So we saved him and his family. Except for his wife, we destined her to be of those who remain behind. وَأَمْطَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مَطَرًا فَسَاءَ مَطَرُ الْمُذَرِينَ and we rained upon them a rain of stones, and evil was the rain of those who were warned. قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَىٰ آللَّهُ خَيْرٌ أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Say, O Muhammad, praise be to Allah and peace be upon, uh, peace upon, and peace upon His servants. Whom he has chosen is Allah better or what they associate with him? Now, the servants who he's chosen are the prophets and the messengers. In Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah for his names and attributes and actions, and salam upon the prophets and messengers. And Shaykh Islam bin Taymiyyah brings a benefit in that, uh, an ayah like that. He says, Salam is upon the prophets and messengers, li salamati in manhajihim, wa salamati aqidatihim. Because of the correctness of their aqidah and the correctness of their, yani, their belief about Allah. That's why salam is upon them, because of the correctness of their belief in Allah. Allahu khayrun amma yushrikun. Is Allah better or what they associate with Him? That's a question intended to rebuke them. No doubt Allah is better. 
أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَأَنْزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ حَدَائِقَ ذَاتَ بَهْجَةٍ مَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تُنْبِتُوا شَجَرَهَا أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ يَعْدِلُونَ More precisely, is he not best who created the heavens and the earth and sent down Alhamdulillah. Yahadikumullah subhanakum. Is he not best who created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky, causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty which you could not otherwise have grown the trees thereof? Is there a deity whether is there a deity whether with Allah? No, but they are people who ascribe equals to him. And here I don't understand the need of the word more precisely. And he just it doesn't that's not needed. Any is he not best who created the heavens and the earth? And they that's what they believe. And then Allah says, "Aillahun ma'Allah." And is there a ma'bud, an object of worship besides Allah? Because here, any uh, that is the the context of the sentence. And look at all the things that Allah does that you could not do. Then is there a god besides Allah? Is there an object of worship besides Allah? Rather, there are people who ascribe equals to Him in worship. And they make others take some of His rights of worship. أَمَّا جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Is he not best who made the earth a stable ground and placed within it, within it rivers? and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier? Is there a deity with Allah? No, but most of them do not know. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجَعَنُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ is he not best to respond to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there a deity worth with Allah? Little do you remember. Now, Allah is the one who answers the call of the one in desperation when they call upon him. And no one answers the call of the one in desperation except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For anything that is done to indicate that others answer the call of the one in desperate need, this is shirk. For, uh, there's a few things, Yani. First of all, in the way that people believe that these people in the graves and the awliya can answer you in, in times of need, and this ayah is a response to them. But also, even any shirk has become so widespread among the society, even in popular culture. Like, look at how many now, how many times they bring these any movies and books and whatever about superheroes and whatever. What's the asal that they built it all upon? They built it upon this. In Yujib al Muttar. When a person's in desperate need, this man will come and fly down from the sky and solve your problem. For Wallahi, this is something is not permissible for a Muslim to have any involvement in it all. Any Asal attend any the movies are, are forbidden, any because of what contains and the any the haram that it contains. Like, and this is aswa wa aswa. It's much worse. And the mawdu'a, mawdu'a shirk. Yani the belief that you have someone who can answer people's need when they're desperate in need, other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah, all the kids are being brought up with this. They're being brought up with these comic uh, characters and movie characters being told, yani time and time again, maybe. Allah knows best how many tens, how many hundreds of the, these things they brought out. All our kids, they get just that message all the time. That there are others who can answer your need except Allah. Even if it's fictional. That there's someone else that can answer your need except Allah. Someone else will come and rescue you in your desperation except Allah. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُطَرَّ إِذَا دعا. No one answers people in desperate need except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And removes what touches you, what has afflicted you. 
and makes you khulafa on the earth and he puts you in authority on the earth a ilahu ma allah there is no god besides allah little is it that you remember for a person has to avoid all any anything like this and this is something that wasn't present in the time of of quraish quraish never believed that there was something else that answered their dua in desperate need that's why allah says if you believe this how can you worship others besides him أَمَّنْ يَهْدِيكُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ is he not best who guides you through the darkness of the land and see and who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy? Is there a deity with Allah? High is Allah above whatever they associate with him. And the same is said for this. أَمَّنْ يَبَدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَمَنْ يَوْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Is he not best who begins creation and then repeats it and who provides for you from the heaven and earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Say, produce your proof if you should be truthful. And they knew that no one did this except Allah. And so the question is, why are you worshipping others besides Allah if you believe this? Say, not in the heavens and earth knows the unseen except Allah. And they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. بَلِ الدَّارَكَ عِلْمُهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكٍ مِّنْهَا بَلْ هُمْ مِّنْهَا عَمُونَ Rather, their knowledge is arrested concerning the hereafter. Rather, they are in doubt about it. Rather, they are concerning it blind. Uh, I want to see just to... Now, any then the knowledge of the hereafter... They have no knowledge of it. And he arrested Yani. I'm, I'm not sure that's the right, the right word. I was trying to find a better word for it. Um, in the clear Quran, their knowledge of the hereafter amounts to ignorance. And they have no knowledge of it except ignorance. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا وَآبَاؤُنَا أَإِنَّا لَمُخْرَجُونَ And those who disbelieve say, when we have become dust as well as our forefathers, we will indeed be brought out of the graves. Now, I found the statement I was looking for for uh, Saidi. He said, it means it's weak and little and uncertain and it, doesn't, it isn't knowledge that reaches your heart. That's why he says the meaning of it is. And it is weak. Their knowledge is weak. It's shaky. It's uncertain. And it's not knowledge that is firmly grounded in the heart. And that's the meaning of idaraka, ini bal idaraka il muhum fil akhirah. Afwan, yes, we've already explained the ayah, an ayah similar to that before. لقد وعدنا هذا نحن وآباؤنا من قبل إن هذا إلا أساطير الأولين. We have been promised this. We and our forefathers before, this is not but legends of the former peoples. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Say, O Muhammad, proceed through the land and observe how was the end of the criminals. Now, in here, in you will find that everyone that you pass by or everyone that you have heard of or everyone that you find out about their story, any their, their fate will be the same. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا تَكُنْ فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ And grieve not over them or be in distress from what they conspire. 
ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين and they say when is the fulfillment of this promise if you should be truthful قل عسى أن يكون ردف لكم بعض الذي تستعجلون say perhaps is close behind you some of that for which you are impatient وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ And indeed your Lord is the possessor of bounty for the people, but most of them are not grateful. وَمَا مِنْ غَرَبٍ نعم وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ آه وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَيَعْلَمُ مَا تُكِنُّ صُدُورُهُمْ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ And indeed your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare. And what is in their hearts and what they say on their tongues. وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ and there is nothing concealed within the heaven and the earth except that it is in a clear register. Naam. Any that which cannot be seen by the senses, but it is recorded in Allah al Mahfuz. In Hada al Quran, Yakusu ala bani Israel, Akthar al Ladi hum fi yachtalifud. Indeed, this Quran relates to the children of Israel, most of that over which they disagree. Naam. Any this Quran came Muhaymin. Muhaymin and any over the the previous books. In other words, it is a it is a distinct authority over them. It tells what is correct and what is not correct from whatever remains of the Torah and the Injil. Well, and in, most of the issues that they differed over, most of the things they differed over, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala clarified what they need to know in the Quran. وَإِنَّهُ لَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And indeed, it is guidance and mercy for the believers. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَقْضِي بَيْنَهُمْ بِحُكْمِهِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ Indeed, your Lord will judge between them by His wise judgment and He is the exalted in might, the knowing. His wise judgment here that He's judging is between the, the people who differ. Any, any people, Bani Israel or anyone else, the people who differ, Allah Azza wa Jal will judge between them in that which they differed over. Now, for the only people who truly benefit from it are the believers. Otherwise, any, the non-Muslim can get a benefit from it, but it won't be a true benefit because it didn't come with guidance. فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ so rely upon Allah, indeed you are upon the clear truth. إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَى وَلَا تُسْمِعُ السُّمَّ الدُّعَاءَ إِذَا وَلَّوْ مُدْبِرِينَ Indeed you will not make the dead hear, nor will you make the deaf hear, the call when they have turned their backs retreating. Naam, you cannot make the dead hear. In here, what about what happened in the... Any what uh, about Awal oh, well, and first of all before that The word the dead here Does it refer to the people who are actually dead Or does it refer to the people who are dead In the way of the Quran which has come many times Any in the way of the people who are The person who is spiritually dead yani They were a disbeliever both apply and you cannot make the person who is spiritually dead hear the truth Naam. like in the, the word the dead and you cannot make the dead hear what about what happened in the battle of uh, what about what happened in one in some of the battles where the prophet spoke to the dead But that was a, 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 an individual situation that happened because of a, a, because of a miracle that was given to the Prophet ﷺ and it was not the default that the ability of the Prophet ﷺ is to make the dead here. You cannot make the dead here. 
And you cannot make the deaf to the call here, yani the one who is deaf to the call. You cannot make them here. Especially when they turn their backs and walk away. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِهَادِ الْعُمْيِ عَنْ ضَلَالَتِهِمْ إِنْ تُسْمِعُ إِلَّا مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِآيَاتِنَا فَهُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And you cannot guide the blind away from their error. You will only make here those who believe in our verses so they are Muslims. Naam. Here the blind are not the... The blind here are not the people who are physically blind. Like in the people... The eyes are not what goes blind, but the heart in the chest is what goes blind. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجَنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُوقِنُونَ And when the word befalls them, we will bring forth for them a creature from the earth speaking to them, saying that the people were of our verses not certain in faith. Naam. Uh, this beast... They differed over it. Yani we know it's from Ashrat al Sa'a al Kubra. So when we say the Ashrat al Sa'a, remind ourselves how many big major signs are there? Hi, Abdul Rahman. How many major signs Ten. are there? Ten. How many of them do we know from the beginning that we know what order they come in? Three. First will come the Dajjal, then will come Isa, then will come Ya'juj and Ma'juj. What's the last sign that we know is the last one? The fire that will come out and drive the people to their final gathering place in Asham, from Yemen to Asham. In between that is how many signs? Six signs. What are the six signs? Let's bring them out. First of all, let's make it easy. Three of them are the three chasms that open up in the earth, one in the east, one in the west, where the earth swallows up its inhabitants. In one on the east, one on the west, and one in the Arabian Peninsula. That's three gone. But we're left with the sun rising from the west, and the smoke, and the beast that will come out from the earth. Did I get it right this time? Because last time I didn't get it right. Did I, did I finish it now? Inshallah, because last time I, was, I went off on a, some random tangent. I was, don't know what I was thinking about. But inshallah, that should be clear. So this is the beast. The beast will come out of the earth. It has to be khariq, yani khariqa lil ada. It has to be. All the ten signs have to be extremely unusual, like not normal in the universe. Some of them said it is the camel of Salih, but there's no strong dalil for it to say that it's the she camel of Salih. But there is something that they missed out from the translation here. And the clear Quran says there's no further information about it, but that's not true. There is. Where do you find some further information? In the Qira'at. There's another Qira'ah of this ayah. Instead of tukallimuhum, instead of tukallimuhum, now I'll actually get you the, I'll actually get you who, who the Qira'ah because this ayah is, I'll tell you whose it is. It's 2782, right? Um, I can't find it from, I can't find whose Qira'ah it is. But there's a qira'a, there's a qira'a that with other than the word tukallimuhum. I didn't find it in the ashr. I don't know if it was, I, I thought it isn't in the, in the 10 yani, uh, that I could find. I'll double check it. But it, there's, it, there's definitely a qira'a other than this qira'a, which instead of tukallimuhum, he'll speak to them. It mentions that he will brand them and he will mark them. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it's tukdimuhum like that. It, he will brand them or he will mark them. For this came, and it came like that. But I have to find out. I have it. I have. It, I had it written down, but like it's gone from my mind. Where is it from? Like, and there is a qira'a like that. There will be a dab from the earth that will brand. It will brand them. And it will mark them. From who will be from? Yani. Uh, I'll bring you, I'll bring you, I'll go back to it. I'll bring you the, the proper thing instead of sit, telling you from memory. Like there is a qira'a like that, that it will brand them. 
and it will mark them. And it, as it, in terms of who was a, in, in faith and who wasn't. You know, the sun rising from the west, we mentioned, right? We did mention the sun rising from the west, right? We did, yeah. Huh? We did, yeah. We did. Okay. Start. It is if tar time. This is gonna. This is gonna drive me mad. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna spend one more minute here. Now, for the dabba, I'm gonna read you about it because I don't. I don't agree with the statement they said, where they said that we don't have any more information than what is written in the ayah. I think there is more reliable information than what is written in the ayah. But it's true. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of information about it. But there is more. I'm gonna read it for you now. Inshallah, Taala. I remembered the reference. I found it. وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فَوْجًا مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ And warn of the day when we will gather from every nation a company of those who deny our signs and they will be driven in rows. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوا قَالَ أَكَذَبْ حتى إذا جاءوا قال أكذبتم بآياتي ولم تحيطوا بها علما أم ماذا كنتم تعملون Until when they arrive at the place of judgment He will say did you deny my signs while you encompassed them not in knowledge Or what was it that you were doing And what exactly did you do? Um, or what else was it that you were doing? And Allah knows better what it is that they did. And the decree will befall them for the wrong they did and they will not be able to speak. Yeah. أَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا جَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِيَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَالنَّهَارَ مُبْصِرًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ Do they not see what we made the night that they may rest therein and the day giving sight? Indeed, in that are signs for people who believe. Continue, continue. <laughs> And one of the day the horn will be blown And whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth Will be terrified except whom Allah wills And all will come to him humbled Naam The horn will be blown twice As it's mentioned in Surah Al-Zumar And some of them took a view for three times if I'm not mistaken Like in the, the, the well-known views that will be blown twice وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِكَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ it will be blown one time. Everyone on the heavens and the earth will fall down dead. Then it will be blown again and they will all stand up. And so between the two is 40. The narrator didn't remember. Is it 40 days, 40 years, 40 months? He didn't remember. He just said 40. Between the, the first and the second. In the first one, the world ends. In the second one, the resurrection the resurrection begins now. وَتَرَى الْجِبَالَ تَحْسَبُهُ وَتَرَى الْجِبَالَ تَحْسَبُهَا جَامِدَةً وَهِيَ تَمُرُّ مَرَّ السَّحَابَ سُنْعَ اللَّهِ الَّذِي أَتْقَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ إِنَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَفْعَلُونَ and you see the mountains thinking them motionless while they will pass as the passing of clouds. It is the work of Allah who perfected all things. Indeed, He is aware of that which you do. Yeah. 
Whoever comes at judgment with a good deed will have better than it. And they from the Torah of that day will be safe. And they will have better because Allah is which gives them a reward that is better than the reward of what they did. And whoever comes with an evil deed, their faces will be overturned into the fire and it will be said, are you recompensed except for what you used to do? The evil deed here is shirk. And the evil deed here, yani is shirk. Naam. And every sinful deed, like in every sinful deed, it has to be either, yani first of all, a major sin, and it has to be one that the person did not repent from, and it has to be Allah's will to punish them in the fire. For shirk is the one that is universally mentioned here, and yani it enters in straight away. As for the major sins, you have to qualify it. Yani if Allah wills to punish them, and if they don't repent. إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ رَبَّ هَذِهِ الْبَلْدَةِ الَّذِي حَرَّمَهَا وَلَهُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ وَأُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say, O Muhammad, I've only been commanded to worship the Lord of this city, who made it sacred and to whom belongs all things, and I'm commanded to be of the Muslims. In this city or region, Yani Makkah, وَأَنْ أَتْلُوَ الْقُرْآنِ فَمَنْ اِهْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ضَلَّ فَقُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ And to recite the Qur'an and whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of himself and whoever strays say, I am only one of the warners. And the Prophet ﷺ doesn't hold guidance and misguidance as in tawfiq in his hands. What he holds is only to warn and to guide in the sense of give instructions and ultimately guidance and misguidance are in the hands of Allah and the benefit of a person's guidance only comes back to themselves. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ سَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ فَتَعْرِفُونَهَا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And say all praises due to Allah, He will show you His signs and you will recognize them and your Lord is not unaware of what you do. Yeah. And here, the last ayah, and all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal will show you His signs so you will know the difference between truth and falsehood and you will not have any doubt about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and here it's a plural by the way, Allah will show all of you his signs. You will recognize them, you will not have any doubt about them. Allah will not punish you without a warner, without sending you his signs. And Allah is not unaware of what you do. Uh, before we move on, yeah, before we move on, I know we have 15 minutes left for the class. I wanted to read to you about the dabba. I did before my page in my book went away. But no problem. And I wanted to read you from the book Ashrat al Sa'a, the signs of the hour with regard to the with regard to the dab. I'll read you some of it, Yani. I'm not gonna read you all of it, but I'll just read you some parts. The dab. In this dabba will appear from the earth at the end of time as a sign of the nearness of the hour is authentically reported in the Quran and the Sunnah. As for the Quran, we brought the ayah in Surah an naml This ayah mentioned the coming out of the dabba and that it will happen at a time of corruption among the people and that the people will have left the commands of Allah. They will re have replaced the religion of truth. Allah will bring the people, the dab out from the earth and it will speak to the people about that. See Tafsir ibn Kathir. Now, some of them said, it means that the, the threat of punishment will happen because of the evil that they have done and they have stopped any taking, paying attention to the commands of the, of the Sharia. In Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, 
and he yakunu, he said, Waq'ul Qawl, Yakunu bi mawti al-ulama wa dhahabu al-ilm wa rafi al-Qur'an. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, this will happen when the ulama die, knowledge is taken away and the Qur'an is raised up. Um, he said, Akthiru tilawat al-Qur'an qabla an yurfa'. Recite the Qur'an a lot before the Qur'an is taken away from you. Uh, and from the Sunnah, uh, he brought the hadith of Abi Huraira in uh, Sahih Muslim that three things will happen when they happen. It will not benefit a person to have believed if they didn't believe before. The sun rising from the west and the Dajjal and the beast that will come out from the earth. And uh, in the hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Amr, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that the first of the signs to come out will be the sun rising from the west and the beast that will come out for the people at Duha in, in the early morning time. Any and I don't any whichever one comes out first, the other one will come straight away after it. And the rising of the sun from the west and the beast that will come out from the earth. Uh, And there's a narration uh, from an Imam Ahmed uh, that uh, supports this you know, this issue that the beast will, and what's the word? It will it will mark them. Yeah? That the dabba will come out, and that it will brand the people on their noses. As for the type of the dabba, there's a, there's a discussion about it. Was it the camel of Salih? And there's a, there's a long discussion about that. We spoke about it. There's no specific evidence for it. And where the dabba will come out from, and they differed about it. And some of them said that it will come out from Makkah. That was generated by Al-Tabarani and Al-Awsat from Hudayfa ibn Usaid. That it will come out in the greatest of the masajid. And it will come out in Makkah. And Ibn Uyayna. Um, he supported it Or that it will come out in three different places um, And it will appear in the Masjid al-Haram For After all of this yani, the, the point is What I wanted to show to you I didn't find the Qira'ah in that But it's there somewhere It's from the Qira'ah Maybe from the Qira'ah Shad I don't know Like in the point is I wanted to show you That there are numerous narrations That whole point was about the footnote Which said There's no reliable information About the beast except this ayah there are riwayat in the sunnah about it that came with it and I will find that riwayat if I'm not if I'm not going mad there is a riwayat if and I'm going to check the wording of it but it's either in the language of it Nam, now that's what the wording is the wording is tek limuhum not tuk limuhum tek limuhum any mukhaffafa. But I didn't find who read it like that. Like and there is people who read it like that. Taklimuhum. Any not to kalimuhum means to speak to them. Taklimuhum means to wound them, any to brand them, to mark them. Like and I didn't find I still didn't find who's who read it like that. Like and it was read like that. Taklimuhum. And it will brand them or it will mark them. Uh, we have still 10 minutes and I think we should continue yeah? We should definitely continue Because we're going to get behind so. And especially because I went off on a tangent But it was driving me mad that I had it in my mind And I had to find what it is But it's taklimuhum And it came with tukalimuhum and taklimuhum That it will any brand them or it will mark them Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Tasimim Tasimim Tilka ayatul kitabil mubin These are the verses of the clear book. Now, and this uh, surah is Makkian. Natlu alayka min nabai Musa wa fir'awna bil haqqi liqawmi yu'minun 
We recite to you from the news of Musa and Fir'aun in truth for people who believe. Yeah. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعًا يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيِي نِسَاءَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Indeed, Fir'aun exalted himself in the land and made its people into factions, oppressing a sector among them, slaughtering their newborn sons and keeping their females alive. Indeed, he was of the corruptors. Now, we've heard of this before, but we have to remember that each story has a specific benefit for it. And the story is not repeated without benefit. There's a specific benefit for each one. وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلُهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ نعم with a fatha I didn't sorry the last one I, did, I thought I heard you say نَجْعَلُهُمْ وَنُرِيدُ أَن نَمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And we wanted to confer favor upon those who are oppressed in the land and make them leaders and make them inheritors. In Ibani Israel, we spoke about they would inherit the land of the people of Fir'aun. They would be a model, an example for the people in faith. And they would be, I mean, they would be saved from the people of Fir'aun. And this is from the favor of Allah Azza upon them. Ya Bani Israel, adkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni fadaltukum ala al-alamin. I preferred you over all of the people. وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَوْدِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ and establish them in the land and show Fir'aun and his minister Ham, Ham, Haman. Haman and their soldiers through them that which they had feared. And Haman was one of the ministers of uh, Fir'aun. He was his minister. For well, here in this ayah, it's be, in, this, in this surah, it speaks about Fir'aun and Haman. And Haman was his, perhaps his chief minister. And it said that he was the minister of any building and architecture. That's a view. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنِ وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِّ وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And we inspired to the mother of Musa, suckle him, but when you fear for him, Cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and we will make him one of the messengers. Now, it was inspired. The mother of Musa, of course, she's not a prophet. She's not a prophet. She's inspired to her. Allah inspires her to do this. You need to feed him, breastfeed him. When you fear for him, cast him into the river and don't fear. Allah will return him to you, which he did because of the, the fact that he wouldn't feed from any other woman. Yeah. And we will make him one of the messengers. فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًّا وَحَزَنًا إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا كَانُوا خَاطِئِينَ and the family of Fir'aun picked him up out of the river so that he would become to them an enemy and a cause of grief. Indeed, Fir'aun and Haman and their soldiers were de deliberate sinners. And the strangest thing, and he, Fir'aun, what were, they, what were Fir'aun and Haman scared of? They were scared that a boy from the children of Israel would destroy their kingdom. And Fir'aun saw that a boy will destroy my kingdom from the children of Israel. And yet, they, Allah Azza wa Jal, decreed for them to pick him out of the river, knowing that he would become their enemy and he would become the source of their grief. 
وقالت امرأة فرعون قرة عيني لي ولك وقالت وقالت امرأة فرعون قر وقالت امرأة فرعون قرة عيني لي ولك لا تقتلوه عسى أن ينفعنا أو نتخذه ولدا وهم لا يشعرون and the wife of Fir'aun said, He will be a comfort of, for the, of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son. And they perceive not. And she was Asiya. Her name came in the Sunnah. It's not from the Israeli Atini. It came Asiya. That was her name. It came in the Sunnah of the Prophet. And she was from the women who completed their Iman. She, was, she had complete Iman. Radiallahu uh, anha. And what? she said to Fir'aun, don't kill him Because we can take him as a son The Zahir is that they could not have any children And we can take him as a son And they didn't perceive what the end result of that would be وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغَا إِن كَادَتْ لَتُبَدِي بِهِ لَوْلَا أَنْ رَبَطَنَا عَلَى قَلْبِهَا لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ <coughs> And the heart of Musa's mother became empty of all else. She was about to disclose the matter concerning him had we not bound fast her heart that she would be of the believers. And she wanted to tell that it was her son. She almost got to the point where she exposed Musa that this is my son out of the fact that her heart became empty. And that's a, a beautiful description of what it's like when you become consumed by something. And he, it's as though her heart has nothing in it at all. Like it's empty of everything except the worry of Musa. And she almost told, but Allah made her firm. And she was one of the believers and she had faith in the promise of Allah. What's the promise of Allah? We're going to send him back to you. وَقَالَتْ لِأُخْتِهِ قُصِّيهِ فَبَصُرَتْ بِهِ عَنْ جُنُبٍ وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And she said to his sister, follow him. So she watched him from a distance while they perceived not. وَحَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَرَاضِعَ مِنْ قَبَلُ فَقَالَتْ هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَيْتٍ يَكْفُلُونَهُ لَكُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ نَاصِحُونَ And we are prevented from him all wet nurses before. So she said, shall I direct you to a household that will be responsible for him, for you while they are to him, for his upbringing sincere. And they feared that Musa would, يعني, he, would he would die يعني, because he's not drinking milk from anyone. And they brought all of the nurses, all of the women that could possibly feed him from the women of the land, and the people from the court of Fir'aun. And he will not drink milk from anyone. So Musa's sister came and said, I know a family who can take care of him. And they'll bring him up for you sincerely. And they'll look after him as a baby. They'll take care of you. She'll feed him and he'll drink milk from her. It's the only family in the whole country that he'll drink milk from. Who was it? His own mother. For Allah Azawajal sent Musa back after Fir'aun took him. And now Fir'aun has agreed that Musa will grow up in his house. And now Musa goes back to his mother to settle her heart so she knows that the promise of Allah is always true. And that's what we always must remember. The promise of Allah Azawajal is true. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised something, victory to the Muslims, so on, be like the mother of Musa. Have complete and total confidence in your heart that the promise of Allah is true. And how subtle is it? And so far, Musa has been born, gone to Fir'aun, gone back to the mother of Musa, back to Fir'aun, and still nobody and he knows the reality of what he's doing. And at this time, Fir'aun is looking in every way to try and kill the boy that is going to destroy his kingdom. And that boy is under his own nose. And he can't see. For subhanallah, al-latif, how subtle is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ كَيْ تَقَرَّ عِينُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ وَلِتَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقُّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ 
So we restored him to his mother that she might be content and not grieve and that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. But most of them do not know. We take one more ayah and then we'll stop. وَلَمَّا بَلَغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَاسْتَوَىٰ آتَيْنَاهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا وَكَذَٰلِكَ نَجَزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And when he attained his full strength and was mentally mature, we bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge, and thus do we reward the doers of good. And that is يعني, the, the introduction to the story of Musa. That is going to come in more detail in this surah in Surah Al Qasas, and we take that tomorrow morning. So my dear brothers and sisters, before we finish, just a very small note. Tomorrow will be the last day that we will have a class after Fajr. After that, our class will be moving to a long afternoon class. Now, what makes this more complicated is that the times in the UK are changing. So we have British summer time that comes in on Sunday. So uh, if I tell you any roughly, the class, I think we're going to start it at 3 o'clock British summer time. That will be 6 p.m. Dubai time. Uh, as opposed to 7, which it is now. Because it's going to ch- British summer time moves an hour closer. So we're basically going to be 3 o'clock British summer time on Sunday. We'll start the class, inshallah ta'ala. But Saturday, we'll continue the same way. We'll, for Saturday, we'll have the class after Fajr and we'll have the class after Asar, inshallah, like normal. But once the times change on Sunday... We're going to have the class. We're not going to have a Fajr class because of uh, yani the Ashr al-Awakhir, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, and we're going to be busy in the nighttime. So we're going to not have the Fajr class. But what we're going to do instead is have a class from 3 o'clock British summer time. You, if you don't know what that time is where you are, it's very confusing. We don't usually know what time it is either. And people come to the masjid at the wrong time because British summer time is very confusing. But... You can check it on YouTube because you'll see that the scheduled time for the class on Sunday will not be Fajr. Instead, it will be any in the afternoon time, any depending on where you are in the world. That's what Allah Azza wa made easy for him to mention. Allah Azza wa knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.